What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here, coming at you with Samsung Galaxy A33 5G camera tips and tricks. So if you want to get the most out of your cameras on your device, then stay tuned. Now the first thing I want to go over are the actual camera hardware features that we have here with the phone. So as you can see on the back of the device, we do have a quad camera setup, we have a 48 megapixel main camera, an 8 megapixel ultra wide angle camera that can capture images at up to 123 degrees, a 2 megapixel depth sensing camera for portrait mode, and a 5 megapixel macro camera for close up images. And then the front facing camera is 13 megapixels. So to get to the ultra wide camera, you just go here to the 0.5 and it'll switch you over to that. And then to get to the macro camera, you're going to go to the more tab and it's going to be right here. So you can get nice and up close and have things be in very good detail. We can also then head over from here over to portrait mode to get those nice blurred out backgrounds. We can flip around to the front facing camera to do the same thing. We can also go over to the regular front facing photo mode. And we can also do a group selfie mode as well that crops out a little bit so that you can fit multiple people in one front facing photo. Now to easily access the camera app, despite where you are throughout the operating system, you can be in the app drawer, you could be in a different app, you could even have the display off. But all you have to do is just double press on the power button and it'll pull up the camera app right away. So you can see right there it worked. We can also exit out of here and if we double press on that button, it takes us right over to the camera. Now this is done through a feature called side key and you can actually customize this to pull up any camera app of your choosing or any other app for that matter. So we're going to pull down the shade, go to the settings, go to search, type in side key and you'll see it right there, side key. Then from here, go there. And you'll see that by default, we do have quick launch camera enabled. However, if you want to open up a different app instead, maybe Snapchat, for example, or any other app, you go here to open app, then go to the gear icon and you can pick whatever you want. So again, for this example, I'm going to pull up Snapchat as some people use that as their main camera app. And then if we double press in the power button, it will indeed pull up that app. So certainly very convenient there. Now heading back into the camera app here, we have a variety of different functions up top. Now the first one that I want to show you is actually picking the aspect ratio of the photos that you're capturing. So you can see by default it's 3 by 4 We can also do full, which is the entire size of the display. We can capture 1x1, one one, which is square. We can do 9x16, which is really ideal for taking thumbnails, for example, for a video. We can then switch over also to the full 48 megapixels for the 3x4 option. So if you do want to take 48 megapixel photos, you do have to switch over to this mode as by default it doesn't actually take photos at 48 megapixels. So that's pretty interesting. Also up here is the timer. So we have 2 seconds, 5 seconds, and 10 seconds, which certainly comes in handy. We also have the toggle for the flash as well. And we also have in this corner some different effects. So you can do different filters. You can also change things related to the front facing camera. So there is a beauty mode if you want to enable that. However, I typically don't. I actually disabled that. I want my pictures to be pretty natural. But then from here, we're going to go into the main option menu. So it's this gear in the upper left corner. That'll take us over to the camera settings. Then from here, you'll see this option, high efficiency pictures. So if you do find yourself filling up a lot of the space on your device, that could be due to the large size of the various photos that you're capturing. So if you enable this, then all the pictures you take will be in a more efficient image format. There's also a similar option for video as well, so you can reduce the file size of videos too. So that's worth trying out if you see it's necessary. Then scrolling further down here, there's an option called shooting methods. So there's a few things here I want to show you. The first one is to use the volume keys to take a photo or video. So by default, if you move the volume key up or down, it's going to capture an image or begin recording a video. So that's pretty nice. Essentially, it's like a shutter button. However, we can further customize that. So we'll go back here. And then you'll see here that we have an option for zooming in or out. There's also another option for controlling system volume. So maybe you have a song playing in the background and instead of using the volume up and down to do a function related to the camera app, it will just control the system volume. But if we select this one, zoom in or out, and we go back here, you can now use the volume up to zoom in and the volume down to zoom out, which is pretty awesome. And if you zoom all the way out, it'll actually take you over to the ultra wide camera. Now going back here to the shooting methods menu, 
We have another option called floating shutter button. So if we enable that, you'll see that we actually have a shutter button that is just literally floating. So you can put the shutter button anywhere you want and it will do the same thing as if you were to actually use this shutter button down here. And then this final option is called show palm. So essentially, if you have the phone in selfie mode and you want to record a video or take a photo, you actually only have to show your palm like this and it will now take the photo. So there we go. We'll do that one more time. And there we go. It worked. Now if you want to capture burst images with the camera, all you have to do is swipe down on the shutter button. So let's give that a try right now. And there we go. It just took a bunch of pictures very quickly there. Now there's another option that actually allows you to do that, but instead create GIF images or GIF. I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but let me know in the comment section below. But essentially if we go to the settings here and we go to swipe shutter button, we can then go to create GIF instead and then now it's creating the GIF and let's check that out and there we go. Pretty cool. Now also in this main camera settings menu is the ability to add grid lines. So if you were a fan of the rule of thirds, which I remember learning that way back in art class, then you can do that here with the phone. So with the grid lines, you can better position where you want the camera to be to really take that ideal photo. So if you find this to be useful, then there you go. Now if you find yourself constantly changing different settings on the device, and you want to just stay that way whenever you're pulling up the camera app, then there actually is this cool option called settings to keep. So we'll scroll down here and you'll see it right there, settings to keep. And essentially there's several of them. The first one is camera mode. So it'll start the camera in the last used mode. Another one is selfie angle. So if you want the camera to always go to the front facing camera, whenever you're pulling up the camera app, you can do that. We can also set presets for various filters and also super steady. So if super steady is on in video mode, it'll keep it on instead of turning it off when you close the camera. And then the final thing I want to show you is how to customize the various options down here at the bottom of the camera app. So if you go over to the more tab, you'll see we have a bunch of different abilities. There's pro mode, pro video, single take, night mode, food, panorama, macro, of course, super slow motion, slow motion, and then hyperlapse. So let's say we want to add the macro camera to the main menu down here, and I want it to be between photo and video. So all we have to do is go to this plus button and then grab that and then put it down here, go to save. And then now you'll see that in this bottom menu, we now have the macro mode right there. So it's super convenient. So I definitely recommend checking that out, maybe customizing some of this stuff so that it makes it easier for you. But then if you want to get rid of it or remove other things, you go back to this plus button. I'm going to drag macro out. There we go. And we can actually take fun mode out of there and portrait mode as well if you wanted to. So that's pretty nice. I like that Samsung does allow us to customize the camera app at least a little bit to make it more convenient. But this concludes my video on camera tips and tricks for the Samsung Galaxy A33 5G. I definitely like that we're getting so many different cameras with this device giving us so many different abilities. Now, of course, compared to a higher end phone from Samsung, like the S22 Ultra, for example, we're not getting nearly as good of quality, but at the same time, it is still cool that we at least get all those various features. And who knows, if you find yourself really using a lot of these various cameras on the device rather than just using the main camera and that's it, then maybe you can further justify then getting a more higher end Samsung device. But in the meantime, I'm very impressed with all the cameras on this phone, and I certainly think you will be as well. But again, this concludes camera tips and tricks for the Samsung Galaxy A33 5G. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care and have a great rest of your day.